No. Electrical and electronic engineering. My name is Jonathan King and I will be your tutor or lecturer for this third form electrical and electronic engineering course. So today we are going to go through the basics of electrical and electronic engineering, an introductory session. Right, what is electrical, elect electronic engineering? And we are going to talk about some of the very important thing, a very important thing in dealing with electrical and electronic engineering. Okay, so let's start. So the first thing anyone can ask himself is what is electrical engineering? Now, we can give a, a basic definition here. I'll try to break it down some more. So electrical engineering as an engineering discipline focused on the distribution and transmission of electrical energy, machinery, generation problems, motors, and its controllings. However, its main focus, you see I have focus in bold, its focus is providing electrical power. Now, the reason why we have focus as providing electrical power is because the transmission of electrical energy and machine generation problems and all those stuff can somewhat are can somewhat you know lead you astray or stray off the focus of providing electrical power there are issues that yes you need to that need to be fixed to provide electrical power but in solving them sometimes it can lead to other um, components that may be less so of what in electrical engineering is so you see electrical engineering in the maintenance of generators um, let's say generation problems that's dealing with like the generation of electricity big machinery at factories um, that are just doing basic tasks um, motors and and anything in um, I don't know I in in factories as well you can find big motor systems in factories and like conveyor belts and stuff like that you find big more systems that all is under electrical engineering um, and mainly it's just delivery of electrical power or energy so now that we have a basic understanding of what electrical engineering is we're then gonna go on to electronic engineering now not well that these two things are different they sound the same but they are different disciplines and we can go through how they're distance different shortly okay so what is electronic engineering we're gonna have another definition electronic engineering which is also known as electronic and computer com communication engineering is the study of semiconductor devices in integrated circuits and printed circuit boards. Now that's a lot of words, it's a lot of information to take in, stuff that you may not per se fully understand. Um, so I'm gonna try to break this down a little bit more. So let's take this uh, first part, we can ignore the first part, but it says that trying to engineering, aka we know what it is. So it's the study of semiconductor devices. Now semiconductor devices are devices that control voltages and currents in circuits now i'm not going to get into the details of all of that but basically it these the controlling of these of this voltages and currents convey into signals that are sent out that can be um translated or understood as messages that um integrated circuits or circuits with microcontrollers in them or uh, microcomputers or any type of controller or logic device can process so let me go over that again so it is the study of a semiconductor device it is in integrated circuits and printed circuit boards so semiconductor devices as I said there are devices that control the flow of um, current and voltages in, in integrated circuits right um, there are different types of these like um, trans, um, bipolar junction transistors, diodes, etc, etc, and gates, logic gates, all those sort of stuff are semiconductor devices. We're not going to get into all of that, but those are the type of devices. These devices can control signals and interpret them and they can 
carry out messages so if you get and it is not really per se like a uh, uh, written messages computer messages messages like where you have binary and you have like zeros and ones well one being yes or zero being no and electrical that's how it works in computer science is slightly different but basically when you are dealing with like logic and stuff like that you get ones and that means yes and zeros means no now you get to all of that but basically it is a study of devices that control signals and Integrated circuits and printed circuit boards. Now, integrated circuits and circuit boards are just the basic circuits you find in in, in your devices. You can find them in microwaves, etc., etc. We get into other stuff where you see these sort of things later on in this presentation. So, next thing. Now we have a compressed view of what is electronics versus electrical. No, I want you to ask yourself after the last two slides we went through, what do you think? Or what do you think is the main difference between them? What do you think really makes them stand out from each other? I'll give you a couple seconds to think about that. You can pause the video and think about that. And we will know. We can pause the video for a little bit and we're going to talk about it. So, in short, electrical focuses on the flow and provision of electrical power, mainly seen on larger scales. While electronic circuits can interpret signals and instructions and perform tasks and instructions to suit the circumstance. Let's go over that again. So, again, we mentioned electrical focuses on the flow and provision of electrical power. So, that means that we have in houses and stuff like that, we're just mainly focusing on electricity getting from one point to the next. No, the main difference between this is electronic circuits deal with logic. So electronic circuits make decisions, they can interpret signals, they can take instructions and perform instructions to, to based on the instructions they get. So say for example, let me, let me just make this in layman terms. Say you're the CPU, you get an instruction to turn on a light from, from another signal or another point in, in, a, in a board. Let me say you're in a team and someone in the team says, you know what, turn on that light there. And you, the you, the CPU, will then send a signal to someone else to say that it's actually like to flip the switch. So that's basically how it works. Is basically they can interpret signals and instructions and prefer and perform tasks or instructions to suit the circumstance based on what signals or instructions were sent to it. So that is basically the main difference. Electrical focused on just the flow of electricity electronics focus on the logic behind the logic behind the circuits so understand another thing to understand which may get a little confusing electronics still deals with the travel or the movement of voltage or power from one point to the next but it is done in a way where this where the voltage is sent in signals so it is meant to be able to create a logic or be able to give out instructions based on the signals given so that's the basic that's in short it was a kind of long but that's in short what the difference between electronics and electrical is and you can ask yourself that over and make sure you understand it you know come up with some examples in your head of where you can see the difference so next we have we're going to give some examples of the in uses of electrical engineering so we have wiring houses. This is basic. You hear about electrical engineers coming in to wire your houses and all of that a lot of the time. That's basic stuff. There's nothing new you live in. Once you live in a house with electricity, you know that someone had to come in there and set up the, the main breaker in the house and connect it to the power line outside so that you can have electricity in your house, right? So then you have repairing and assembling electrical systems in factories. Um, as I said before, you have, um, you know, conveyor belts, um, packaging units, stuff like that there. Sometimes these, these things can involve electronic components, but they're, especially for conveyor belts and those sort of things, they do tend to be a lot of electrical um, components to it. Now, electrical and electronics do come, sometimes go hand in hand because you do have the signals but you still have to have a main power delivery to the same 
electrical system so you may have the same way you go wire even back to wiring houses you can end up wiring up the the conveyor belt or the packaging machine stuff like that there you have to that's not something that, that that's per se an electronic engineer would deal with that's something more electrical engineer would deal with the actual connections to allow the flow or the pass through of power in the specific systems um so that's basically what that is so then we're going to move on to repair and assembling of generator systems good so we have um have you ever known that in hurricanes a lot of houses or buildings do have backup generators because because if something happens they want to be able to kick back in and um, either that the house still has electricity after or the um, but as I said this is where you find a lot of larger institutions or like bigger houses having backup generators in the case that the electricity goes out or the power goes out you have something there to generate electricity after the fact this here is very useful for big companies that may have refrigerators or that may want to continue working through the day so they're not you know wasting time as i said time is money if, if the electricity goes off and the company and the company relies heavily on electricity then we have an issue where we have an issue where the elect the, the electricity being out causes um lack of productivity and people lose money so the repair and the assembly of general systems is also an electrical thing because you are again dealing with electricity you're dealing with backup energy so the repair of the generators you have to assemble and install them um, you have to understand how it works you have to know how to connect it correctly um, the correct protocols you have to follow there are a lot of different things to go into something as simple as the thing is simple setting up a generator system. There are obviously smaller generators, but a system is a, a large generator that requires a lot more maintenance than one of the smaller ones. So that's those are some examples of the use of electrical engineering. Um, next, we have examples of the use of electronic engineering. Now, these things you tend to see. A lot electronic engineering you tend to see a lot more and you tend to see a lot more of it than than electrical because these sort of things are things you use every day continuously from things down from automated systems like as doors windows automated doors um, automated temperature checkers automated security systems automated lights all sorts of different automated systems use electronic components um yes there are some electrical components but it's mainly electronics because it's dealing with a lot of logic because it is working and operating on its own so you have a case where the systems are cons consistently sending and receiving signals and making decisions and sending out instructions so the automated system is the main one where you see it every day a microwave oh well, sorry we have the automated system i said with the automated doors etc etc then we move on to our microwaves and smart fridges so from microwaves you realize that you have the the um the little screen there that gives you the light or the time that requires a a automated um that requires an electronic system or electronic um, circuit board or an electronic engineer to come to make that product sorry for the lack of words um, yes it requires an electronic engineer to come up with that product and to develop that product um, sometimes there are ones that are um, digital screens and some that are um, sorry not digital screens I can't remember the name of them right now but the screens that basically use are use like the single pixels when well, i say pixels but you know there are screens that kind of look like zeros where it has zeros that make up the letters and the words i cannot remember the name right now off the top of my head but i will get back to you that information by the next class um 
so we have the screens that that basically look like the numbers that have the the dashes um we have oled screens we have led screens we have lcd screens a lot of different screens so these screens all have signals being sent to them every time an input is made so every time you hit a number you will see it pop up on the screen when you hit that number signal was sent to the circuit board or the microcontroller that is controlling the microwave to display that two and whatever number else you put in and then when you press enter it then tells the microwave to then start the the warming system i'm not sure exactly what that system is called but we just call it warming system for now the warming system or the system inside which um heats the food to to actually start and it be continuously warming the food for the period of time you would have and um you have cell phones um those use um electronics technologies where you have um the cpus and the phones and the gpus and the different com um, components that carry out you know the logical tasks that allow to touch your phone and you know put it instructions and stuff like that they have medical technologies military technologies all of these things fall under electronic engineering because a lot of these things require logic to them and the actual programming or transmission of signals and instructions okay so we have the most important thing in electronics on electrical engineering to date for anyone you need to practice safety so we have safety first so this here is mainly dealing with electrical you tend to have less safety problems when you're dealing with electronics because you're not dealing with such high voltages and power and current and what's not that may be more harmful to you than what you deal with with at an electronics base electronics level it does not mean that there are not you know there's not a threat there but it is not as high so safety first so the first thing we talk about is ppe so ppe is also known as personal protective equipment you can see it is there um the acronym is spelled out with the letters highlighted or bolded and it refers to items typically worn by a worker to provide protection from recognized hazard hazards in electrical engineering ppe is broken down into two sections electrical ppe which is also referred to as ppe and insulation protective equipment which is ipe so let's get a quick walk through um with what these things are so electrical ppe electrical ppe right so for the electrical industry the electrical ppe for the electrical industry generally includes things like rubber insulating gloves and leather protectors to protect the hands and arms rubber insulating sleeves to protect the arms and shoulders flame resistant clothing to protect the body against art flash so that's any sparks that may happen when you're dealing with um you know connecting wires you may connect a pause on the neck that is not um, closed off and it may create a spark depending on the voltage you're on and what it is you're dealing with um hoods to protect your head from against heart heart flash so that's protect any falling you know sparks to drop on your head and catch your hair on fire hard hats to protect your head from electrical shorts and striking or being struck by objects so the same thing with electrical shorts the same flashes the same um the hard hat is going to protect you from the sparks and also being struck by anything that can um cause brain damage or damage to your head safety glasses and shields to protect the face against flying objects and art flash again these things are just protecting your eyes and face from any flying things any sparks anything like that um we have safety shoes and over shoes to protect the feet and worker from being from being grounded so Let's explain this last one. Let me explain a little better. Safety shoes and over shoes to protect the feet and worker 
from not being grounded i have to correct that but from not being grounded now whenever you're dealing with electrical you always want to be connected well sorry from being grounded you don't want to be grounded when dealing with electrical because what will happen is that if there is any current or excess voltage off of the circuit you're dealing with it can run straight through you and go to the ground and if there's a continuous circuit through you it will harm you it can shock you severely and it can kill you it can stop your heart there's a lot of different things it can do it can burn you internally it can burn you where it first contacted you there are a lot of different things it can do so when you want the safety shoes and overshoes to protect your feet from being directly connected to the ground but still insulated so that it is not a case you're conducting any voltages or electricity or current or anything like that so that's electrical ppe now insulating ppe instead of protective equipment or ip kind of sort of speaks for itself so insulating protective equipment ip includes items such as insulating rubber line holes blankets and hoods insulating barriers made of fiberglass and phenolactic resin live line tools such as hot sticks switch sticks and shotgun sticks all these sticks here are just allow the individual to handle the live the live end of a wire or a connection without directly touching it um, plastic or fiberglass line hoods and covers that can be installed with live line tools now, all these things here are basically stuff to protect you from conducting electricity in any form or fashion so from the hoses the blankets the heads all these things protect your body and create your body as a walking insulator um i don't know if you've heard before but an insulator is something that restricts the flow of electricity or puts up a resistance to the electricity or voltage or current meanwhile a conductor is something that is built to allow the flow of electricity to pass through with little to no resistance and there are different types of insulators and conductors you may get into that a little later down the course but for right now we're just going to deal with the basics good so I'm not saying i want you all to be aware of is electrical hazard awareness it's something very important so the first thing i want to ask you is what is a hazard ask yourself what is a hazard so let's give a definition. A hazard is any potential or actual threat to the well-being of people, machinery, or environment. So this is any threat at all. It could be potential happening in the next five minutes. It could be immediately happening or it is an actual threat currently going on. Anything that that can injure you as an individual, other individuals around you, or machinery and the environment. So you want to be very mindful of these things anything that can cause harm or damage to you other people machinery or the environment it's basically what a hazard is good so let's talk about electrical hazard safety now this is the process of taking precautions to identify and control the electrical hazards so basically it is just taking the different steps and rules you need to take to make sure that all the hazards that you may have around you are dealt with as best as possible and that you take the necessary precautions to make sure that you do not run yourself into a situation where you have to be dealing with a very dangerous hazard or even if it's the case that you do run into it you are protected enough that you can deal with the hazard safely without causing any other injury to yourself or anyone else so let's ask why is it so important if these hazards are not taken seriously and we our workers fail to take the necessary precautions it can lead to injury or even death because electricity is not something you want to pay, play with it is very dangerous it is very powerful and it can easily end up very going very very wrong and that's not something you want fires which can call which can result in loss of property damage or property can lead is a loss of property can result in a in property damage sorry or even loss of property let's read that one over again just to 
go back over that to make sure that we have that correct. So, we have if electrical hazards are not taken seriously and workers fail to take the necessary precautions, it can lead to injury or death, fires, which can result in loss of property, damage, or even even can lead to loss of property or even damage of property. So, so let's talk about the common causes of electrocution. So you have making contact with overhead wires, so any wires that may be high and down that may be uninsulated or maybe open and live, you can make contact with those and it can electrocute you very nicely and it will hurt and it's not something very fun I've experienced myself. Undertaking maintenance on live equipment. So that's dealing with equipment that currently has electricity flowing to them. So basically you do not want to be working on equipment that's live. You want to always disconnect it from the source of electricity, whether it's a breaker, a battery, a plug, anything like that. You want to disconnect it from that. Working with damaged electrical equipment such as extensions, leads, plugs, and sockets. Now a lot of these things here have built-in safety features to protect people from protect people to allow people to work on them without necessarily having to disconnect or stop the flow of electricity through them but what can end up happening is that these safety precautions can end up failing and people can end up getting hurt because they are working with something that is faulty and what the machinery was supposed to do it was not doing and it led to an individual getting electrocuted or her or even worse, even worse, end up dying. So, we also have using equipment affected by rain or water ingress. So, this basically means that anything that has been wet by the rain or has water settled in it can be an electrical hazard because water is an extremely good conductor. Um, as you would know, like even in like the shower, they tell you don't step in puddles of water because you can be shocked and it can kill you because it conducts the water it, it conducts the electricity so well it's basically as if you were getting struck by the lightning directly so it conducts the electricity very well so anything dealing with water or rain can cause and has a hazard to you in your working progress and our working process good now how do you respond to electrical incidents So if you come across a person receiving an electric, electric shock, if possible, disconnect the, the electrical supply, assess the situation, and know very well, never put yourself at risk in this assessment or in this whole process. Never put yourself at risk. Take precautions to protect, risk, protect yourself and every, and every and anyone else in the vicinity. So if you are working with an open wire that is hanging that has arcs flashing from them you want to make sure that everyone stands clear and that you yourself either stays clear or make sure you have on something that's highly insulating and deals with deal with the issue from afar using a a like stick or something to put it somewhere else that it does not cause danger to anyone else so another example of this here is if someone is currently being shocked, the first thing you always do, as I said, disconnect the, the electrical supply. Either you can, you know, turn it off. If you can't do that, get like a stick, an insulated stick, and, you know, try to pray the person away from it. Because if you touch the person, the electricity will conduct through that person into you, and you would end up being shot, shot as well. And something about electricity is because of the way it works it causes your nerves to seize up so if you try to grab someone and pull them and you get and electricity starts to conduct through you you will not be able to let go and then hence you will be putting yourself in as much danger as the person that is being shot so that's something to keep in mind um let's talk about some more so the first thing you want to do is apply the first and when you've gotten the person away from the electrical source you apply the first aid principles, the R, S, A, B, C, D. I'll walk through what those are shortly. Assess the injuries and move the casualty to a safe area if required. And then you can also administer first aid if trained, seek urgent medical attention, 
and that is basically what you do when you're dealing with electrical hazards so now we're going to talk about what the drsabcd means so this acronym stands for danger response send for help airway breathing cpr and and defibrillation so you see the danger you respond to the danger you send for help either you or the help comes to make sure this person's airway is cleared and they're still able to breathe that's when you move on to breathing if they cannot then you do cpr if cpr does not work get this fibrillator which ironically is shocking the person again but is in a control voltages to help boost their heart to meet again so that was the basic run through of today's class and this video will be uploaded to the youtube channel and you can watch it over as many times and i'm looking forward to having the next class with you guys and enjoy the rest of your evening